Okay, so let's talk about phase distortion, because this is one of the methods that's used uh, to give phase 4 its unique sound. Continuing our focus on oscillator R, which is up here, if we want to introduce some phase distortion, what we can do is simply adjust the shape knob here, and we'll notice that the shape of the waveform generated will start to change, and this will alter the timbre, the sonic quality of the sound that we're hearing. So when I hold down one note, I'm just going to press C. We see the shape of the waveform here, and one thing I should point out before we move on, when we're looking at the visuals up here, we can see the waveform generated by each individual oscillator. In this box here, we see the output, so we'll see the combination of all the different oscillators, the modulation, the phase distortion, any effects of the filter. We'll see the result of all of that over here, so just keep that in mind. For now, like I said, I'm going to focus on what's happening in oscillator R. That's the only one that we're listening to. So I play this. We have one note, a sine wave, not a whole lot happening. As I adjust the shape knob here, notice what happens to the shape of the waveform, and also notice what happens to the timbre, the sonic quality of it. All right, so now I got the shape knob all the way up, and that doesn't sound anything like a sine wave. Okay, pretty interesting. Now, what exactly did we really do? Well, we had just talked about phase, and with the sine wave, with that example that we were looking at, the beginning of the phase, uh, basically at zero degrees, the sine wave is starting at this midpoint and then starts to increase. So if you focus at this point of the waveform, basically zero degrees, as I adjust the shape knob, The way that we're distorting the waveform is we're essentially distorting the beginning of the wave cycle. Now depending on what waveform that we choose, we're going to get some different results. We also have the ability to add uh, some formants, which are going to introduce and emphasize some extra harmonics, some upper harmonics in the sound. So for instance, we see right now here it says SIN, which is for sine wave. The one is for the formants that are being generated. One just basically means that we're generating a sine wave and we're only emphasizing the fundamental frequency, the actual pitch of the note that we're playing. Now, before I start to add any formants, let me just go ahead and go through some of these other waveforms here so we can see what the uh, phase distortion will do to those. So I'm gonna click and hold and go up one. Oh, I think this is the last one. Let me click and hold and go down one. There we go. So this is a sine wave, but this is basically operating at double the frequency. If I increase the shape here. So we see we get a very different sound with that. I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but I will just show you that we have a variety here. It's almost like a sine wave, but it's only the first half of it. If I increase the shape now, get a different kind of sound there. The first one that we have here, well, I guess there's not that many. I don't need to skip all of them. Here we have PW, pulse width. So each one of these peaks now, you can uh, think of as a pulse. And as we increase the shape, we're basically increasing the pulse width. And then going down here, we have a sawtooth. Now as I adjust the shape, we go from a sine wave to a sawtooth, basically. Now let me go back to the example of the sine wave. The number here, like I said, this determines basically which uh, upper harmonics we're going to emphasize. When it's set to one, we're just hearing the fundamental frequency, which relates to the note that we're playing. If I bring this up to two, all right, now we can hear this is an octave higher, all right? So we're emphasizing the second harmonic, the second partial. But as I increase the shape here, that phase distortion, we can hear we're still getting a little mixture of the sound from the fundamental frequency. Now what's cool about this is that we can start to introduce even more formants. Our third harmonic is an octave and a fifth up. But as I distort the phase here, I can essentially kind of blend that with the original sound. And as we look at the waveform here, we can see those formants that are being generated. Now we're doing all this with just one oscillator, uh, but there's ways that we can use other oscillators to distort the phase of this one, which we'll look at a little bit later. But the concept of phase distortion is essentially that. We're taking the shape of the waveform and we're altering it in some unique way.